I'm kind of half scared of it. If I was 30 years younger, I might have tackled it. Now you better off letting them do it. When, I, when you get my age, you start to realize your uh, limitations. That's and if it. you don't, you're going to get in trouble. Yeah. Don't even work on the door. Sometimes you got to get down in positions. It's like I don't know how to do concrete work. I turn down a garage floor because it's a lot of work for that. Oh, yeah. Best way to do it. Yeah, I can do it. Uh, I'll take 
Get a green hymnal stand if you're able. Page 110. Page 110. Heaven's Jubilee. Sing it loud. Some glad morning we shall see Jesus in the air. Coming after you and me, all his life we share. But rejoicing there will be where the saints are proud.
And a wonderful way to start your weekend. Uh, Amen. Amen. <clears throat> All right, let's have Brother Mike back up. I want to give him time to get too comfortable with that, Brother. Maybe possibly. Lead us in the congregation, and then we'll take up the offer. There you go. Amen. All right, get our green hymnals again. Stand if you're able. Page 358. Page 358. Won't it be wonderful there? Yes, sir. When will the Savior be enter that glory land? Won't it be wonderful there? Right. 
soul. Hallelujah. Boy, he's worthy, isn't he? Yeah. When we were unworthy, he was worthy. Take him back and hallelujah. Take your Bibles this evening, if you will, now with me. And turn to Psalm 139. 139 Psalm. We'll find our text there. And this evening. Psalm 139. Psalm 139. Let's go to the Lord's Prayer. Father, we thank you once again that we're so highly privileged to be back in the house of God this evening. Thank you for the good singing we've had, Lord. Bless my heart. I know that. Thank you for the good Bible study we had back in the back, the men's Bible study earlier. And Lord, thank you for another time I can stand behind the sacred desk and break out the bread of life. I pray, God, that you use me one more time tonight. We'll bless you and praise you for it. In Jesus' name we pray and ask it. Amen and amen. Psalm 139. And look at, uh, look at verse uh, 22. 22. Let's see. We start reading verse 19. Surely thou wilt slay the wicked, O God. Depart from me, therefore, ye bloody men. For they speak against thee wickedly. And thine enemies take thy name in vain. Do not I hate them, O Lord, that hate thee? And am not I grieved with those that rise up against thee? I hate them with perfect hatred. I count them mine enemies. I count them mine enemies. I don't preach on that right there. That thought right there. I count them my enemies, the enemies of the Lord, they're my enemies. Amen. They that make light of Christianity are my enemies. They make light of church, they're my enemies. Amen. They make light of the Bible, they're my enemies. Because they're making light of God. And we have the permission right here, is what the psalmist said, to uh, whoever goes against God is the enemy. God is the enemy of the church. There are our enemies, and you can count them your enemies. I assure you that. I love... The psalmist said also, I love them that God loves. What God loves, I love. What God hates, I hate. I do. I really do. I, I can stand darkness because Satan's called the prince of darkness. I don't even like darkness right now. Not, I don't like it. I'm glad that when we get to heaven, there'll be no more dark nights. Right. We'll be all light. Mm -hmm. And we're children of light. We're called children of light. We're called the lights of the world. And by saying that, the word God says we're the uh, true lights of the world. Uh, we when we let our light so shine that they may see our good works and glorify our Father in heaven. That's what God wants out of us. Amen. He wants us to glorify Him, and at the same time we glorify Him, we'll convict that lost heart. Yes. Amen. Amen. So uh, I say, they that make uh, light of Christ Christianity are my enemies and your enemies. Our enemy is someone who uh, an enemy is someone who cannot be trusted. An enemy is someone who cannot be trusted. You ever had an enemy that you didn't want to run? I mean, somebody you just knew that maybe a thief or maybe a blasphemer of the, of the Word of God, and you just don't want to run. I, I, the Bible says evil communications corrupt good manners. Right. You're going to have a good mannerism. You can go to Hobnob with that much just like that, and it'll rub off on you, honey. Right. You turn, uh, you have a little, you have the prettiest little white toy poodle that you can find, and this is clean. You got it perfumed up and everything, living in your house. Turn it out with some hounds that run a large, look, run loose all the time. And see what you got when you come home. It'll be full of leaves, it'll be dirty and muddy and everything. Oh, yeah. And it's the same thing happens to a child of God when they get out and they get martyred by the sin of this world. Amen. They get, they get downtrodden, they get beaten down by the devil, the flesh, and God's dealing with their hearts. And eventually, I believe God does uh, train the child up and wait where she goes and when it's old, it won't depart from it. In other words, they're going to come a time when they're going to get right and they're going to be solid for the Lord. Right. I, I, that's, why I, that's why I interpret that. <clears throat> Train a child up in the way that you go and it's old, the Bible says it will not depart from it. So there's got to be a time in that person's 
stray from God, to, to get right with God, and then never depart from it again. She's going to hear, she's going to stay right with God when that happens. I believe that. I do. How else can you interpret that, Brother John? I don't know how any else can interpret that. Train up a child, the way, the way it should go. Get it to the Lord. The Lord get it right with him, and then he gets out in the world, gets the wrong people, and gets out in the world, gets the old admirer of the world on him, or her, and then eventually God's going to get them back in. If you belong to God, but the only case I want you, want, the Bible says you're bought with a price, the blood of the Lamb without spot or blemish. Once you, uh, once you receive that, that, uh, that deed of spiritual eternal life, I guarantee you it can't be broken. They might get out and get, go back on God, but I guarantee God will see to it you get your hide back in. Mm -hmm. He's going to do it. But why? Because you belong to Him. You belong to Him. Amen. He bought you with a price. Right. Amen. Webster's 1828 Dictionary defined enemy as uh, one who hates or dislikes as an enemy to truth for loss, for or as an enemy to truth or falsehood. In, in theology, the enemy is the devil. Amen. Right. The devil. That's yes, what sir. Well, the Webster's 1828 Dictionary defines enemy as. That's what we've got tonight. We've got an enemy in the devil. Yes. He's our enemy. Amen. He walks about as a roaring lion, seeking to make fire. Mm -hmm. Amen. He, Jesus said, Simon, Simon, Satan had desired thee, they may sift you as wheat. But I have made supplication for you. I've prayed for you. If you got God praying for you, all right. Right. There was no man for the prayer of God. I guarantee you. Yes, sir, brother. Now the Lord prays for me every day. Amen. I believe when I pray, He prays. I do. When I pray and ask God to help me, He prays. Amen. Now, Jesus prayed for me. He my, He's my intercessor. He's my mediator between myself and, the, and God the Father. The one mediator with man is Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. In Acts, chapter, in, in Acts uh, uh, chapter 13 and verse 10, uh, the Bible says, Thou child of the devil, thou enemy of all righteousness, wilt thou not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord? Amen. Will thou not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord? We have people doing that right today. No doubt about people who used to have come to this church from years back and they made a profession of faith right here on this altar. And I baptized them, and they stayed in here for a while, and after a while, they got out. I don't really put a lot of confidence in that. I don't, but it does happen. It does happen. We wouldn't have much scripture pointing to that person that's gotten astray, wouldn't we? Right. Even the parable, of the, you know, the, the illustration of the parable of that son that went astray. A sheep, they called him the sheep, they left the 99. He said they left the 99 and went after the one. Amen. I think God does that yet, don't you? Mm -hmm. I really do. Oh yeah. I mean, you're in here and you're under submission to the to the Lord, and, and I'm your pastor, and you you come hear me preach and give you good sound doctrine to digest. Uh, I believe you're all right. But God's got something. He's got to start chasing down. Mm -hmm. and he will catch. Whatever he or chases, he catches. I'll show you that. Amen. Let me say that the an enemy of the Lord is an enemy of mine. An enemy of the Lord is an enemy of mine. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm at battle with the, an enemy of the Lord. I am. And it's like the devil is behind all this. Anything like that goes against God. It's the devil behind it. Right. Because he wants his best to make the Lord look bad. He wants to uh, He wants to take away a, 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 a praise and honor and glory from the Lord for himself. That's why he failed. He tried to be like the most high, the prophet said. He tried to exalt himself to the signs of the north. Up there where the Lord sets uh, God over everything, his throne with his leg stretched out over the universe, his feet laying, uh, sitting on the, uh, uh, the earth as a footstool. Amen? And the devil tried to overthrow all that, and God cast him down to the sides of the pit. Jesus said, I beheld Satan as lightning, as lightning fall from the sky. So the Lord evidently uh, was pointing toward the fall of the devil, and God kicked him out of heaven. That's what I believe in. Scripture that are pointing to. Amen? Mm -hmm. So he being, he being God himself, he, he's the son, amen, he's the second person in the God, he had Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. So he, God, he's seen all this beforehand. Right. Before then. Amen? Amen? He said a third of the He's always been there. Amen? Oh, yes. Now the man, the physical man, Christ Jesus, has been. He was born in a virgin a virgin womb by God Almighty and, and, and Mary the virgin uh, woman. But uh, the Spirit of God that inhabited him and the God that uh, glorified him and took him back to heaven with him, 
And uh, he sees at the right hand of the Father, uh, the Bible says, uh, making intercession for us. What a blessing that is. He's interceding for us. He's talking to God the Father, Brother David, on your behalf. He's a mediator between God and man. What a blessing that is to not to know that I'm affiliated with somebody like that. Right. Uh, God, you ought to be proud of that. As a child of God, that you're affiliated with God Almighty. Amen. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Let me just give you another one here. Cults are an enemy of God. Mm -hmm. I shared this with you before. I shared again to an old couple. They had worked with Beach and Vic. The, the, her husband was a, a, a preacher, and he was one of the, uh, he was an associate to Beach and Vic and A.V. Henderson later on for a while. Right. Amen. The pulpit that Frank Norris flew from. A uh, church in uh, in Fort, Fort Worth, uh, Texas, uh, Texas uh, Dallas, Fort Worth, uh, that had run about a thousand in that church and had about a thousand in that church in Detroit, Michigan, and flew back and forth between the pastor both of them. And that's something. And he was a he was a, this fellow was a was a a, a associate pastor uh, at the Beach of Big, and now they have been down here and I visited the widow. He's gone on being Lord. I visited the widow and her husband, her daughter. And, and her husband had uh, had uh, come down here and somehow another got mixed up with Mormons and raised. They were raised in Temple Baptist in Detroit. Can you believe that? And they got they became members of a Mormon church. I got. They had that had that poor old mother horn swallow, and she said, "Well, I really don't think there's that much difference in us." And then I said, "Man, what are you talking about? That's a cult. That's what the stinking devil right. says something like that." Amen. And, and God, God, all woman, I was a young preacher then. Right. This has been years ago. I let her know right quick, like but yes, that was when so I never hopped on the winter was cult. I was no fellowship in a cult. There was the, the, the devil's her master. Right. Any cult was a, was a cult in me. It's the devil that's leading it. Amen. Mm -hmm. Glory yeah. against the word of God. Yes, sir. Truth of God. Right. Oh, I preached a message on the kingdom of the cults. Well, I taught on the kingdom of the cults twice. I went through every one of the cults. And I give I give solid doctrine uh, on what I preached and gives that much. And where they sit in the sight of God. Amen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that cults are an enemy of God. Don't you think they are? Amen. And then number three, the liquor and dope business are enemies of God. Right. They're enemies of God. It breaks my heart for a church to claim to be a church. Yeah. And some and let, let a stake and liquor store move right in on them, right? And they're probably touching some of their ground. Yes, yeah, sir, brother. And selling liquor as they come out here, selling liquor here, right down from the church door. I'd have fought them with tooth and nail. I'm telling you, I would have. If yes, I'd been a pastor there, buddy, it would have been an all-out war for Argo. Yes, sir. Brother. I wouldn't let that bunch come in out like that or work out with No, sir. It's sad. A Baptist church that claims to be a Baptist church would let something like that happen. Right. Amen. Amen. Or old me, you the one you want to say. I don't care. <laughs> That's how I stand anyway. Amen. Then ungodly politics mm. are an enemy of God. Oh, yeah. They can pray their little cocky prayers if they want to up there in Washington, D.C. And then lie like a bunch of devils and cook and cook every decent person around. Right. That piney laughing uh, Nancy Pelosi, and I call her Nasty Pelosi. That's a, <laughs> Nancy, Nasty, Nasty Pelosi. My God, got probably 20 times my millionaire. Yes, sir, bro. I thought he just got paid 8000 a year up there. Sure. How in the world can you get that many millions of dollars without being a crook? Right, amen. And most of them up there are millionaires that come out of there. Most Republicans, most Democrats, all of them are millionaires that come out of there. Yes, sir, preacher. My God, God ain't in that mess. No, sir. He'd be running different dogs in there. Yeah, man. It might run different from God. God might clean the house up there. I want to tell you something. If the Lord does something, He's going to clean the house. He's going to clean. If you keep talking about cleaning the swamp up, He'll He'll mop the swamp clean, buddy. Yes, amen. He'll take a heavenly mop, buddy, to it and mop it clean. <laughs> and with Lysol, that's what it needs. Yeah, there you go, preacher. Or He's burning it down and rebuilding it. Yeah, man. It's still long enough anyway. Burn it, get a new one up there. <laughs> amen. I ain't big, I ain't sentimental but about the history. I believe in the history. But I tell you, they've done so much wickedness up there here in the latter years, and I'm just sick of the whole mess. I like shit cleaned up good. You, brother, yeah. I like shit cleaned up good. That might, that might be what God's going to do. Now, he can do it. Yes, sir, he can. He ain't going to have no problem doing that at all, mm -hmm. son. I tell you. Right. He wouldn't have to get a lady strong. He just, just get done to sit in the third. All right. Party. That's right. It'll all be done. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Ephesians 6 and verse 12 in regard to the what I've already said. The Bible says there, Paul said there to the church at Ephesus, he said, for we wrestle or we fight not 
against flesh and blood. We need to realize that. We need to know who our, our enemy is. It's the devil. He is our enemy. The devil is. Amen. So when we see something going that's not going right, it's a devil. It, things in the church, it's the devil stirring things up. He might do. He might not have done it in here, but he'll get you at your home. And he'll drag it into here. Amen. I seen him do it. My God, I've had people in church. One sit over here, one sit over there, and we look at each other. That's, that's awful. I'm going to tell you something. That is not Christian. That's not right with God to be like that, to act like that. I hate it. I despise it. That's your flesh. That's your flesh. And that's rising up in rebellion Amen. against the word of God. Right. Amen. If you can't love your brother, the Bible says, if you, if you can't love your brother, uh, that, if, you can't, if you can let Satan love God, uh, if, you can't, if you can't love your brother whom you have seen, right. how do you love God whom you haven't seen? That's it, preacher. That's what John said. That's, no, got it right. that's it. Amen. Oh, that's plain. Yeah. That's plain the nose on your face, isn't it? Yes, sir. Amen. You don't show much love on when you do that. I don't care who you are. Right. I don't, I don't put up with it. I hate it. As a pastor, I hate it. I don't want nothing like that in church. I want everyone to be loved. Yes. And, and, and uh, I want us to all be able to congregate together as God wants us to. Amen. In love and in doctrine of the Word of God. Yes. Amen. Loving one another the way we're supposed to. Amen. Amen. Our, our fight is with the devil, not one another. Let me read that again, too. But we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Yes. High places is where the devil works himself. No, Lucifer never comes down here. He's, he's got these little cohorts that do that. He said he's he's not he's not like God. He's not omnipresent. Don't let him tell you is he not? He ain't ever. He can't be ever. What once Don Fish used to say. The devil's not ever work, ever work once, he said, but it's exceedingly fast. That's right. I believe that, you know, it's oh, exceedingly yeah. fast. Mm -hmm. But he has a, he has a, a, a my God, a new, new, innumerable a bunch of fallen angels that, that are with him and devils and uh, what's spelled with a little D, little devils. Oh, yeah. But Lucifer himself, the devil himself, I think he, he roosts. He roosts like chicken. I roost him coming. He roosts in Washington D.C., okay. in Moscow, yeah. in, in China. Oh yeah, different places like that. High yeah. places. Right. If he can take one of them, he can hurt a multitude of people. Right. So he works like that. And he's got all the little cords out there doing this and that. They've been to aggravate us. Amen. So talking about uh, I can't I can't stand my enemies. Amen. That's the title of the message. Number one, I'm going to get into the message now. I'll give you the illustration here. Introduction. Uh, number one, they that publish these non-inspired Bibles are my enemies. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. These countries that publish the, call, they call the Word of God and not, not in the inspiration in them of the Lord. Right. Amen. You got things in there of man, the man wants in there. And, mm. it's and the thing about it is, a lot of your Baptist, so-called Baptist churches use them. One is the New American Standard Bible. Another one's the NIV, non inspired version. Mm -hmm. and it's that. Yeah. It's the doctor Taylor's paraphrase, the living Bible. I can find a bunch of them. Amen. Mm -hmm. The Jerusalem Bible. That none of them are the Word of God. Not all one of them are the Word of God. And they go right against the grain of God. <coughs> Amen. I'm telling you, I, they, they publish those things knowing what they are. And really, I believe the publisher, publishers of these things are all lost. I do. Amen. Well, look here. Let me give you something. Over there in Revelation 22, he said, they that take away from the prophecy of this book and add there too. Yeah. God said he'd take away their name out of the man's book of life. And also he said, uh, the, they that do those things, he said, all the, uh, the uh, plagues that are written therein shall be added unto them. Now here, here's what he did, right? Watch this. So how can it be people that are saved that are doing that or taking away? When, if you're a Baptist, we believe that you don't go into the tribulation. Right. So if you don't go into the tribulation period, that's what we believe, don't we? Yeah. Then the plagues can't be added to you. Mm. So therefore, they're not saved. If the plagues can be added to them, they're not saved. That's it, preacher. Uh, yeah. See what I'm saying? Yes, sir. They're not saved. These publishers that allow the non-inspired uh, non Bibles be, to go out and flood the earth, people read them and take them as God's word, buddy, they're lost. They are lost. And the people that read them, and, and if they're trying to live but some of the stuff that's in them, they're lost too. It's a sad ordeal, isn't it? Isn't it? Amen. Sad. If you listen to me, open your heart up to what I'm telling you. I'm giving you some truth here. 
the Bible true. Right. I'm backing right. it up with the Word of God. Right. Amen. I said they that publish these non-inspired Bibles are my enemies. Mine. They're God's. They're mine too. Yeah. Deuteronomy 12, verse 32. This is what the Lord has to say about it. He said, uh, what thing, what thing soever I command you, observe to do it. Those shall not, thou shalt not add thereto, nor diminish from it. Mm. You're not to add to it or take away from it. It's God's word. Don't mess with it, buddy. Be with just like it is. Don't try to get, put in your input into it. You take the input of God that third mm -hmm. and use it to preach the word of God, teach the word of God, witness the word of God, the word of truth. Then secondly, I find the enemies of Christianity are those that practice religious vanity. And that's all it is, it's vanity. Yes, sir. Vain, the vanity or vain, same word. It means unprofitable. Yep. Look it up in your dictionary. Unprofitable. There's no gain at all in vain. If the things are done in vain or in vanity, there's no gain at all. Right. And here I read that to you the enemies of Christianity are those that practice. Religious vanity. In other words, what they're practicing is as vain as it can be. Let me give you for instance. I don't know how many so-called churches and denominations that preach water regeneration. They baptize you for salvation. Yeah. Catholic Church baptizes you for original sin. What's the way original sin? They do that with a baby. They baptize it the way they call baptism. They sprinkle it. It's a baptism. And that takes the original sin away from that baby. So if it were to die now, he can go to it can go here, play, uh, in between uh, to limbo. I said, babies go to limbo. Only limbo I knew was limbo rock. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't no such thing as limbo. Uh -huh. It's a heaven and earth. That's it. Yeah. That's it. If it's a limbo, we're in it right now. If yeah. it's a purgatory, we're in it right now. They teach both those things. Am I right? Right. They teach both those things. And they believe that an ordinary priest or a human being can pray you out of purgatory into heaven. Ain't that awful? Yes, sir. And they believe that nonsense. Yeah. Of course, Heresy. it's easy to believe when you don't get nothing but Latin. Dead language. <laughs> it's your dead language. You can't understand it. Right. Amen. That's sad. That's a cult. That's a cult, man. You can't go to heaven and such stuff as that. No, sir. Bro. I'm talking about it's vanity. It's all vanity. It's unprofitable. All vanity. Yeah. So, uh, so we see here in the image of Christianity are those that, the enemy of Christianity, are those that practice religious vanity. Everything you do is just vanity. Mm -hmm. Lord's Supper, they believe. Give you, give you a little piece of unleavened bread to eat and a shot of real Morgan David wine or Sweet Lucy or Muscatel or whatever they have. <laughs> and that's alcohol. And the Bible says, Woe to the man that put the bottom to the neighbor's lips. Right. Amen. That's it. That's what he said. He said, Below, it stinketh like an ass and biteth like an adder at the end. Amen. It does. I've seen men come to the end of their lives in liquor, buddy. It eats them up. Yes, sir. Sad. Oh, yeah. Dirt and quiver and. and Cough and vomit and everything, and finally they lie. I've seen a lot of them die from that poison liquor. Oh my God, I grew up in the days when moonshine steels were thick back in East Kentucky and Tennessee. Down where I grew up, these moonshine was all over the hill where I was raised. And sometimes they'd, they'd run it off in something that wasn't copper and poison most people would get and they'd die from it. Right. Alcohol poison. Oh yeah, it's a common thing back years ago, back in the 40s, 50s. Right. I grew up in East Kentucky. Amen. Now here's your scripture on that thought to her. The enemies of Christianity are those that practice religious vanity. Ephesians 4, 17, 18, it says uh, that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk in the vanity of their minds. Yes. See what I'm saying? Oh yeah. In the vanity of their minds, having the understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them because of the blindness of their heart. Yes. It's exactly the group of people I'm talking about right mm -hmm. there. Yeah. All vain talk. Well, it's all vain talk. Talk they uh, spew out to their people. Sad. And boom and damn them to hell on the final end of the things. I'm telling you. Right. Then number three. Number three. I find the enemy of God's word. Keep the mind. Keep your mind on the text. Now I count them my enemies. The, uh, that is in, in uh, the enemy of God's word. Proclaims that Christianity is absurd. Mm. I'm going to read it again to you. Yeah. The enemy of God's word proclaims that Christianity is absurd. Yeah. Absurd. Yeah. Amen. Oh, they, yeah. they do. <clears throat> yes, the Webster's 1828 dictionary defines absurd or an absurd man acts contrary to the clear dictates of reason 
or sound judgment. It's exactly what they go against. Amen. Amen. Clear dictates of reason or sound judgment. They go against that. Mm. They go against what I'm preaching right now. Right. Sound judge, sound doctrine. They go against it. Yes, they do. They, they, they are too caught up in carnality. Yeah. And you know, the, the carnal, car, carnalness of, of this world right now can blind you to the truth of the Word of God. Yeah. It can blind you, can it, brother? It can do it. There's all kinds of things that, that the devil whipped up there for mankind to soak up in their minds mm -hmm. and just damn them for hell. I'm telling you, damn them. Right. This life to come. I'm telling you, yes, that. sir. Psalm 119, verse 105. He said, uh, thy, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Amen. God's word is a lamp unto our feet. A, a lamp unto our feet. Down there, what we watch, what it's talking about. That lamp. You, know, you need to walk in the dark. When we, we used to walk with a lantern, we'd hold it like that. Down to our feet. You know, with that light. Remember those days you walk walking fast with a lantern? I've done it many times. <coughs> Brother, man, it's to show you where you're going. And the Word of God is a light into your path. It'll lead you up the right pathway. Yes. And if there's any kind of a varmint or anything, there's all kinds of two-legged varmints out there. But if there's any kind of varmint or anything on that path you don't want to, you don't want to lock horns with, Amen. <laughs> then that lantern is short. You can jump back. That's and it. Pack your gun like I do. You shoot that thing if you had to. Yes, sir. Amen. We got a gun right here. We got a sword right here, buddy. Sharper than as sharp as he can be on both mm, sides. Yeah. Uh, this sword here cuts going and coming. Yes. It's a two-edged sword. Right. Lord God. We cut away all the garments that get in our way right. in this life of sin that we got to walk down here. Amen. We run into everything along the way. Don't we? It's in our pathway. It is. And that's why God said here, He said that thy word is a lamp unto mm. my feet and a light unto my path. Amen. 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 A light unto my path. God keeps us on the straight and narrow, doesn't sure he? Sure does. Amen? Oh, yeah. Sure does. I'm going to give you this little poem here that I'm through. The enemies of God are nothing but fraud. They lead others astray day by day. Everything they say will be judged one day, and God will have the final say. Mm -hmm. Father, thank you for the word of God this evening. Thank you for enabling me to preach for a little while, God. I pray that I've given your people something they can take home and pillow their heads on tonight. And we'll give you the praise for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. Let's all stand. Please get you a hymnal. Get you a hymnal. What number, Brother Mike? 270 in your red hymnal. 270 in your red hymnal. You need to come tonight and meet the Lord here at the altar of the Lord. You come as we sing. You come. <laughs>
may know that you have eternal life. You that believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life, that you might believe on the name of the Son of God. Do you know that you can know that you have eternal life? No two ways about it. You know. If you know, then you, you know if you die, you're going to heaven. If you know, you know you're saved. And you've got to watch over you. Take care of you. And God will do things with you like you never thought would be done with you before. You know for sure that you're saved. You that couldn't raise your hand when you, when you step out to the Lord tonight, turn your back on your sinful way of life. Repent of your sins. Turn from your sins to the Lord Jesus Christ tonight. Thank God he'll save you and you'll know it. There'll never be another time when you won't know it. I'm serious I can be. I've led people to the Lord. They go away shouting the victory. And months later I'd run into them. They're still shouting the victory. And they get saved when they're like that. In church. Called to preach. Some of them have been called to preach. And I've led the Lord many years ago. Won't you come tonight? And you know, get, get saved real good if you're lost. Go home and, and, and tell everybody, shout the victory, tell everybody I'm saved. I'm a new person. I'm a new man. I'm a new young person. I'm a new woman. Amen. I've been saved. Hallelujah. I've been saved. You need to come. Come right now. Sit up right now. Come on. No, we're going to close y'all. I'll be the last chance you get. Might be it. It's not lined it up right here for you. Might be. I've seen it lined up for people before. Never. Step foot back in a church house again. Sometimes they maybe get killed. Maybe get killed, lose their life early. God sees they're not going to do anything at all. Rather than have to be a bad testimony, he lets them slip out of here. Sometimes they just go over and join the ranks with the devil and stay right there until they die. I've seen them do everything about my life that I have. You need to come here. Come on right now. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to tell us I'm going to say one more verse. If nobody comes, you close the off. This is it. Just that yard. Step out my mouth. Somebody else got a uh, word for the Lord tonight? Anybody? Testimony for the Lord. Raise your hand if you have. If you'd like to slip your hand up. It's up to you. Anybody at all? Don't let the Lord down now. All right, then. I'm going to close out. Um, Aaron, you just pray as long as you want to, there, sir. It's been a good day today. We do bless the Lord for the good services we've had. For meeting with us. He promised he would. He never has failed us. He's always there. When we need him, whether for preaching, teaching, whatever we're doing for the Lord. Amen. And uh, try to, if you can, try to get out here Tuesday evening for our, uh, our prayer meeting. We have a little prayer meeting that will last about 35 minutes. If you get out here, you won't miss that time at all. Give it to the Lord. I guarantee you won't. And then our Wednesday night service. Pray for Wednesday night service and all the things next week. Our Saturday morning uh, uh, by our uh, prayer meeting, the men's prayer meeting. So if you're not taking part and you never have, Take time out to take part in these prayer meetings. They'll be good for you and for the church and for your family, too. Mm -hmm. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. And Brother David, you should just miss us, please. Oh, gracious, most merciful Lord. Please come to the end today. But you guide us and help us. You bring us closer to you each day, each week. Protect our families. But most importantly, that you give us this great gift of salvation where we have merged with you and we'll be with you forever as we are now in part.